Yes. <laughs> I'm not going to Trinidad, but, but still. Yeah. yeah. Where did you make it? Same vibes. Same vibes. Yeah, same warm. vibes. Going warm. It's fine. Yeah. Vacation Tam is one of my favorite Tams. <laughs> I miss you when you're gone, but I the know. day before, you are just a <laughs> real <rare laughs> session. Yay! Welcome back. Four wide here. They were partying, if you're a conservative, in the seat of Durham last night. By-election for Aaron O'Toole, the former conservative leader, he's leaving. So they had a by-election last night. And a lot of people, this was always going conservative, right, Tam? Always going. Well, I, I mean, they've held it since 2004. Right. So, it, you know, you, you can't always say always going, but it was, it's definitely been a stronghold there. So the margins were interesting here. People were looking at how big the victory would be. Aaron O'Toole, last election out, a little over 45% of the vote in that region. Uh, Jamil Giovanni won with 57% of the vote. Now, the turnout wasn't great. It was 27.8%. However, uh, it's, it's a spin kind of morning this morning. Uh, conservatives are saying, you know what, regardless of low turnout, there was an energized section of this vote who came out and they will argue sent Justin Trudeau a message. Um, I believe the heavyweight belt thing has jumped the shark. <laughs> wow. I think we this? are officially yeah. there, whether you're in a leaf locker room or for a by-election. By-elections are where I draw the line on the championship <laughs> belt. Wow. I'm fair. sorry. <laughs> the, that's... I'm sorry. Do you smell what Jamil is cooking? Well, here are the numbers from last night. This is what they were cooking again. A big, big victory for the federal conservatives in a region where housing, like many uh, ridings across the country, are a major, major talking point. Tam, there's going to be a lot of parsing this today. Where do you start? Uh, well, I mean, like you, you mentioned the margin. And uh, so it's about, what, a 10% difference versus what Aaron O'Toole did during the last election. Uh, so, you know, whether or not that is showing that there are people who are energized to get out, if there is a, a sector of the population who wants to get out there to vote because they feel frustrated and because, you know, right now we have a lot of people dealing with housing crisis and affordability crisis. And Durham, that riding is not immune to that at all. Uh, looks like you'll once again see those people. I don't know if that, if that will be the case when it comes down to the actual election. Uh, you know, we'll have to wait and see, but at this point, it looks like a big win. A lot of liberals were out there as well, uh, canvassing on the ground, going door to door for uh, Robert Rock, who was the liberal candidate. And they, unfortunately, they lost by, what, 11,000 votes right there. Oh, that, the party got yeah. rocked last night, mm -hmm. for sure. Like, I just, it, it, whenever a by-election happens, Tim, you know this better than anyone, the, the, the morning after spin is interesting. You know, the losing side's usually, A, by election, low turnout, not a big deal. Winning side is like, no, this isn't a poll. This is an actual thing that happened. Mm -hmm. This is an actual election. This isn't, this isn't Angus Reid. This isn't Leger. This is people getting up off their couch and going. How do you read last night? I mean, I look at the turnout. That's the number that is interesting to me overall, and I think it's concerning. I think as we head into these election years, we got to have more... Um, involvement than than this shows and i think sure it, the, the conservatives can run with that narrative but again if if, if 27.8 percent of the people came out you, you can't have a full understanding of what everyone's feeling but if you don't go to the polls then you're not going to have a voice so I, I think that is the concern or the number that sticks out the most for me diva yeah, I'm with you on that. Um, you know, listen, if I got 57% on a test, I'd be running around with the heavyweight belt as well. Like, I think that's amazing. Uh, but look, celebrate, as you should. You won, and you won with a big majority in that. But again, less than three out of ten people were coming out in that riding. So that should be concerning overall. Now, again, as Tam mentioned, that riding's always been, for the last 20 years, has always leaned that way. Um, and, of course, things can change. So that wasn't surprising to me. Um, and even the, the difference by the 57%, again, also wasn't that surprising. I think there was a name recognition involved with that. But he's out there. He's passionate. And people are, uh, you know, always looking for, especially in your neighborhood and what concerns you the most, that you're looking for that person right there. When it comes to the overall election now, will that translate over for the conservatives? I mean, time will tell, but you never know. But if people are dissatisfied, you got to get out to the polls. Like, that, that's something that just has to happen. Like, when people are coming through a time where, where there's a lot of, uh, you know, complaint and mistrust and all the things that potentially are, are okay to be feeling right now, but you, you got to show up. Yeah. I mean, we, we as a people have to show up, but we have these elections for a reason. Yeah, don't and type it on your keyboard. Well, he's hurt. Yeah. Go to the ballot box. Yeah. Mm. I, I'll just 
I can't get over how in this riding that was held, Aaron O'Toole was the leader of the conservative federal party. And Jamil Giovanni upped the margins. I'm sorry. The Liberals have a major league problem. And I don't care how they spin this today, because you because let, let's say that goes up to 37% turnout, Mayor. I don't know if those margins change. The win, the win is the win. You can, you can tell me, you can tell me the margins go up by 20%. That is a deficit that you're gonna have a hard time swinging around, regardless of who shows up. So I think the narrative that Pierre Pauly has been spinning here in this specific riding has teeth. And the Liberals today are going to have a hard time turning this narrative around. I know it's one seat. I know it's a by-election. It's not the real election. That's a troubling sign. That's the canary in the coal mine. And the Liberals have a big issue here. When they up the total on a former party leader, that is wild to me. And we'll see how the federal Liberals respond. But hey, it's not the real election. It's a by-election. You got a championship belt out of it, but it's a by-election. We'll see where we go from here. Uh, Tammy's got a full update on that and other stories coming up in a second. Also coming up later on BT. Frankie joins us from the Falls View Water Park with its 16 extreme slides, massive wave pool, and 1,000 gallon tipping bucket. Is he going shirtless or not today on BT? We'll find out together. More Breakfast Television after this.